Good morning. Sounds like you can hear me now. Hi, I'm Jonathan Balcom. I'm, it's my pleasure to be the moderator at this first session. First, a, a little bit about me. I'm an ethologist, grew up in Ontario. I just moved back to Ontario from the United States where I lived for 31 years. <laughs> we can discuss that later, but I hear you. And um, I guess we'll move right on. It's my pleasure to introduce this morning's speaker, Tomoko Oyama, who is at McGill University very locally. She and her growing cadre of researchers and grad students have been studying decision making in fruit flies. And the title of her talk is Action Selection in a Small Brain, Drosophila Maggot. Please welcome Tomoko Oyama. Should I hold? Okay, I'm ready. Can I pray? Thank you very much for introductions. Um, today, I would like to talk about my research mainly, and hopefully uh, you can convince that this brain can do some decisions, okay? So I'm interested in how actually nervous system selects the information, then produce the actions. And we and other animal, all animal, receiving the constantly many inputs, right? Sensory inputs. For example, right now, maybe visual cues or auditory cues, and maybe smells or temperatures. Lots of information uh, you are receiving, okay? Right? Then maybe, I don't know, this cause is cognition, but intentionally or unintentionally, I'm not so much care about. But nervous system actually processes these information. Then I don't select the actions, but nervous system selects the actions, what they should do, right? We should do. The muscle is contract or just listening or nogging or et cetera, okay? So that's the how, the, my question is, how actually information is compute in the nervous system, then produce uh, some specific actions. Okay. So this is a cartoon, right? Our brain and the sensory inputs, there are many, many inputs different, and the distinct sensory neuron receives the uh, information, then integrate the, all the information in the nervous system, then actually nervous system choose the specific actions. So that's, a, I think, the brain's main job, right? Then, in fact, brain is not only one, or it's one organ, but it consists from the neurons, right? Billions of the neurons for us. And these neurons are actually connected specific ways. It's not randomly connected, right? You probably everyone agree this stage, all right. Then I want to understand that this logic, how actually input to select the only one output. We cannot do the random stuff, right? Then how this computation happened? What is the logic underlying the, these action selections? Then if I would like to understand that this, uh, uh, computations or how actually process the information to input to output. It's like compu computers, right? Our brain is maybe some people say computers. But first, we need to know these neurons, which one connect to whom, right? What is the map of the, these our neurons? It's not randomly connected. So we, I want to know the first, how this connection happened. We need to know the map of the neuron connectivities to understand that these computations. Then actually not only map, during the actions, who is actually active? It's not all of them are maybe important, even we know the map, right? Then who is actually important for these action selections? So that's I want to know. Then finally, I think if you really want to understand the computation or logic of the, this, the how this happened, how this brain can process, 
we need to know the causalities, which means that inhibits the dis some nodes, then how motor out change. Then we can understand the role of the neurons, right? So for example, if I kill this dot, oh, I cannot put, but the, you can see the white one, okay? Then how motor output change it? That, that's information we can understand that this white node, the function of the white node. Then we can do the each one by one, okay? Theoretically. Now we under, can understand the kind of that, how nervous system works. Then this is very challenging. We need to know the map, neural activity and the causality in our brain. It's very difficult because you can imagine that billions of the neurons we have, right? Then how identify the map? How we can make activity monitors, right? Billions of the neurons and test the causality. It's very, very challenging. So that I would like to understand the, the big animals, but I'm using that this small maggot brain. So the, the, in fact, Drosophila larvae maggot has a brain. I don't know if you know them or not, but they have a nervous system and they have a sensory system I will introduce. Then we can tackle that, identify the map, as well as we can monitor the neural activity because much, much, much smaller brain. Right, we can much easier to monitor the neural activity and also we can test the causalities. Okay, so today I would like to introduce you how this fry system, nervous system, to, uh, to study the neural circuit mechanism underlying the action selections. I would like to introduce you that how we are doing, so the tools and etc. Then, second, uh, I would like to introduce some example that using the, these technologies, how we uh, identify the uh, animal decide using the multi sensory integrations, okay? How this computation happen in the lava nervous system. Then finally, uh, currently I'm doing the little bit evolution of the neural circuit and the behavior. So I would like to introduce I'm, how I'm doing the, these questions in my lab. Okay. So, this is the maggot. Can you see? Here's the centers, white dots in here. Okay. So, this is a maggot, and then they love fruits. Okay. Mom, adults fry, lay egg on the fruit. And then they grown up. They eat all the fruits. So farmer does not like them, actually. So they are pests. <laughs> then, but the, anyway, so then this larvae uh, need to survive until, right, to become adults. Sometimes they become very hot, sometimes cold, or they are predators. So they need to survive this environment, okay? So actually, it's not uh, easy for them that it's even though this is the life cycle of the larvae, so adults, female, they egg, and then one day later, they become first instars, second instars, and then third instar, every time they mold. Then four days later, total seven days later, they become pupils, okay? After the four days, pupils, they become adults. So the, the larvae's job is a successfully become pupils in a safe place, okay? That's their job, right? They need to survive all the environment. It's very short, but uh, they use uh, lots of, so we know that they have uh, all the sensory system like us, okay? Basically, they can sense the light. I don't think they can see the object. So the bright place or dark place. They usually, the young age, they are tentatively likes the dark place. Then pupations, they go to, towards to the light. Okay, they change the uh, uh, preference. Then they can sense the auditory, but uh, it's probably vibrations. We don't know completely audition and we cannot discriminate audition and vibration. 
but they can sense some vibration as a, a sound. Then olfactory system, taste, somatosensory, is a touch, nociception, and temperatures. Okay? Then proprioceptor, which means that they can they have a distinct sensory of the proprioceptors, which means that they have a feedback of the uh, from the muscles, they can coordinate the motor output, okay, using the proprioceptors. And each sensory has a distinct sensory neurons, okay, stereotyped. Then motor output. They cannot do so many things because it's market, but they can forward to crawling, okay? Backward, turn, head cast, hunch, they become short, or rolling, okay? There are several actions, and they are not doing randomly, right? Depends on the stimulation, they select that one of the actions from the six, okay? Then it's, so that's why it's a very simple system, how actually six actions are selected by the input. It's very simple, but it's very difficult to challenge <laughs> the, the answer, actually. Then I told you that the synaptic connectivity map and the neural activity and the causality, that's what we can do in this animal. I would like to show first that synaptic connectivity map, how we do is uh, this is uh, the brain of the uh, maggot, okay? Brain part and then ventral nerve cord, which is similar to our spinal cord, okay? They have a 12 segment. Our case, probably 32 or 36, we have a se the spinal cord. But, but this animal has a, this ventral nerve cord has a 12 different segment. Then brain, okay? And this is a, the transmission electron microscope images, which means that I will zoom in these pictures, that we can identify the synapse, showing yellow circles, that synapse means a vesicles a docking site, right? So the presynaptic regions and the postsynaptic cells, we can identify from the, these pictures. Then, this picture is a series of the image of the entire nervous system, okay? 3D pictures. By hand, by human eyes, we can trace to the neurons, okay? This is an example of the white, pink, green, etc. you can see, right? After the 3D picture, we, if you reconstruct the neurons, we can reconstruct the neuron as well as identify the synaptic partners, okay? Then this animal contains 10,000 neurons. It's, it's not very small, but compared to our nervous system, billion of the neurons, much, much smaller, okay? So that we are one by one, reconstruct the neurons, identify the partners, and then reconstruct again, right? And insect neurons, this is an example of the reconstructed neuron, right? Then blue dots represent the output, input, sorry. The red represent the output regions, okay, synapse, basically. Then insect neurons are stereotyped. Every animal has the same neurons. It's very different from the mammals. Then we can identify the single neurons in the light microscope based on the cell body positions and shape of the neurites. Okay. You don't think they're very similar, right? You see the cell body here and then the very ventral terminate. And then we have a catalog of this neuron trace, light microscope images, okay? And then we can match. So now I would like to talk about the genetics. I'm not sure many people do not like the genetics maybe here. <laughs> I hope you like it. So the Drosophila has a wonderful genetic tools to manipulate the single neurons. So I would like to introduce a gal ues system, okay? This is a gal okay, male has a gal drivers and the genomic enhancer regions define the where actually gal express, okay? So we can express, depends on the genomic enhancer regions, okay? It's a genetics. 
GALFO express the very spa specific neurons, only one neuron, for example, okay? Then this GALFO bind to the UAS and express the gene X. For example, GFP, green fluorescence proteins. So we can imagine that if uh, a neuron, if I want to, have that, then you can imagine that lots of lots of gene genomic enhancer driver lines, okay? Driver flies. We have a thousand of the driver lines. Each driver can drive the girl for very specific neurons, okay? Then we can cross to the GFP enhancer, contain the enhancer GFP. Now you can see that which actually neurons express the GFP after in the, under the microscope, okay? Or we can express the channel rhodopsin. Have you ever had the channel rhodopsin? It's a photo activators. If you shine this protein, it's, it's a channels. When blue light comes, channel open, calcium influx happen, cell fired, okay? So you can imagine that I, I want to activate the neurons X. I will cross to the GAL4 line, X neurons, and then channel rhodopsin lines. Then animal express the channel rhodopsin only in X neurons. Then we shine the blue lights. We can activate the only X neurons. Okay? It's a very simple system, but now this is an example of the neuron types, okay? Brain and the ventral nerve cord, brain and ventral nerve cord, and the, this is a GAL4 and the UAS, GFP crossed, and the image that this line. So the, this is a, uh, the example of the catalog. We have a thousand of the disk drivers. If you have any question, let me know. I can stop, all right? <laughs> So we can manipulate the single neuron types, right? Then we can identify the map, synaptic levels. Then next, uh, the how to quantify the behaviors. So we develop the, some tracker system that monitor the behaviors uh, automatically at the, lots of at the same time. So the number one represents the plate that we will put the animals, hundred animals, on the plate, okay? Then monitor the, the, the behavior from the camera, number two, okay? Then I told you the optogenetics that we want to shine the light from the bottom part, or sometimes I want to put the vibrations, or heat, or maybe wing, some module can provide the many stimulations. Then we can monitor the activities from the cameras. Then I would like to show you the examples. Okay, this is a maggot of the each one from the camera view. Okay, and then we can zoom in. They're walking, okay, and they're turning, right? And the, from the discontinuous information, we can extract the speed, right? How much turned, body bending, and the position of the animals, etc. So the we don't look into the, the videos to quantify it by eye, but it's more likely, basically, we extract the features of the, from the contour data, then what they do, we are quantifying the animal's data. Then features, right, the head angles or club speed is a vertical axis of the, we will talk about later a little bit, and then crawling is a just forward, forward directions. Then, depends on the features, combination of the features, we can actually find that actions. Action means a head cast, right? Usually, head angle is increased, but actually, action is a human words. We need to put the, from the features to put into the actions. We are actually rolling and crawling. This is an isogram. So the, this light side is an isogram of the actions. Each line represents uh, each animal, and then blue light represents the when they head cast. Okay, the pink line represents the when they rolling. Okay, and green line represents the crawling. 
So the each features combination of the values we turned to the the crawling or actions. Ah, six. Okay. Six action. He, uh, the, the head cast is a turning, then rolling is a rolling, then crawling is crawling forward, there is another one is a backward, hunch, then what else? Uh, <laughs> I forgot. One more. One more. Oh. Forward, backward, turning, uh, rolling. Head sweep is a head, a head cast. Hunch. I think it's six. Okay, six. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hunch is just like this, becomes short. And then some people say stop also actions, but just stop, nothing also actions. So maybe seven. Okay. So this is uh, the, what we analyzing the data. Then, the neural activity is can monitor that from this is the activation. We put the optogenetic activation on the bottom and then wave. You can see the wave of the calcium indicator, right? Which maybe represent the crawling. This is isolated brain imaging so that we don't know it's still call it this motor wave and motor output is 100% is correlation or not. We don't know yet, but we think that this forward wave is a correlate with the, mo the forward uh, motor output, okay? So we can monitor the activities in the whole brain as well, it, at the single cell resolutions. So now I can convince you that I introduced all the technology which we are using in the lab, okay? How to uh, see the animals, how to analyze the animals, and how to manipulate the each neuron types. So now I would like to move on to the example how we actually using to answer the, these questions, okay? Using the multi-sensory integration questions. Okay, now a little bit to change the, okay? All right. So now you need to test, okay? So let's change a little bit, <laughs> refresh. Okay, this is my roommate's Bob. I have a roommate, uh, polar bear Bob, uh, the, the, the name is Bob, okay? And he is sometimes uh, sleepy, okay? Half time is very angry. So I always check when I get into the room, I need to check him, he is sleepy or angry mode, right? Based on the many inputs, okay? So now I have a question for you. You think, okay, now you get into this room and then you met the Bob. You think Bob is sleepy based on this one. Who think Bob is sleepy? Okay. So next, who he think he's mad? All right, very few people. Now, uh, I think, oh, 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 sorry. Okay. So now you think he's uh, sleepy. No, right? So he's very mad. So we need to get out from this room and then right run away because he's so much angry. So we cannot stay home, this room, all right? So now you can see that this information, extra information can help to find out that what the situation we should do, right? This is merge sensory enhancement. They, they call it, and the classic experiment showing here in the cats actually. This is a, this cat need to direct the proper uh, positions based on the cues, okay? If you got visual cue or auditory cue, or they present the both together, then they test that where they direct to the, the cat direct to the which directions. In fact, Audio and uh, visual cue performance is very low. Okay, the shadow represents the audio, and the V is a more next one. Then, when they present the two together, this cat present very nicely, even right the very difficult directions. You see that it's not 
summations, actually. It's an enhancement, right? It's not A plus B equal B A, right? It's more than better. This is called to the multisensory enhancement. Okay. And this is a behaviors. But how about what we know about this phenomena in the brain? In fact, superior colliculus neuron has a similar neural activities. So this is a recording from the cat superior colliculus neuron. Okay. Visual stimulation, they do not fire. Auditory cues, they don't have fires. But this neuron fires two together. Okay? You see it, right? So this is a very similar to the performance. This neuron's firing is a similar to the, the performance of the cat. Then they think that this is a decision uh, neurons, right? Actions uh, decision makers. But my curious is actually how this happened in the nervous system. Sup superior curriculus neuron is very high up to the brain from the sensories. And then probably they uh, command to the motor neuron, but how this neuron fire like this, okay? Because they integrate the both informations and how this happened. Then the, there are two, we, we think the two simple scenarios, okay? One simple scenario is a single convergence at the superior colliculus neuron, okay? Which means that uh, visual cue and auditory cue, right? Parallelly going up, and then integration occur in the, sen the superior colliculus neurons. Or the other possibility is merge uh, level of the convergence, which means that the convergence occur at the many levels before the superior curriculum neurons, okay? Why this is interesting, right? I mean, uh, not important. And then because of the, this multi-level convergence, actually it's useful to distinguish that we, okay, in our life, we need to distinguish not only green plus orange, but sometimes strong green, weak orange, or strong orange, Weak green is a meaningful, is different, right, for us. And this task is much easy for the multi-level convergence. Single convergence is very difficult to do this task, distinguish of the, this, the, the quality of the difference. But this multi-convergence is probably happening in our nervous system or many other nervous system, but it's very difficult to prove this uh, circuit in the big animals because it's very difficult to trace one by one. Then we are tackling to the using the, the maybe questions using the these two actions. So animal actually, I'm focusing on to the two actions, roaring and fast crawling. This is, a, a, I will show you the next videos that it's escape response. When attacked by the wasp, they fast roaring, then next uh, rolled, then fast crawling. Then how actually choose, right? That's uh, the wasp videos. Uh, so wasp is the predators. Then they basically lay egg into the larvae. So they need to escape from them, okay? They grab, now a little bit rolled, okay? Then one more time they roll, okay? Okay, one more time, they roll and then remove the sting and then go away. Did you see? You could see, maybe difficult. All right, anyway. So for this rolling behaviors, nociceptions, nocept receptors showing orange is essential because they can sense the nociceptive input. But, and people already show that nociceptive neuron activation evoke rolling behavior and fast crawling. Okay, but I thought other sensory also important for this rolling behaviors. For example, they can provide some mechanical stimulation, right? They grab the animals and there is a wing beat, etc. So to make a wasp in the lab, right? So I thought another touching or some mechanical stimulation is important for lab. Then we can use the sound to activate the only mechanosensory neurons. Then I express the thermoreceptor 
in the nociceptive neuron or optogenetic protein channel rhodopsin in the nociceptive neurons. Okay? Now we can activate only mechanosensory neuron or me nociceptive neuron or together. Okay? We can make the, some artificial environment to the animals. Then what they do, right? That's I looked. Then first I test the mechanosensory uh, you, uh, activation using the, the speakers. They never roll, okay? This is a percent animal that rolled as a y-axis, and then temperature represents a, a higher temperature, increase the nociceptive activations because of troop uh, receptors, okay? Then I activate the only nociceptive neurons, okay? Using the express the troop A in the nociceptive neurons, then increase the temperatures. We see that load, uh, animals that load about 30%. Then next we can combine, right? It's easy now, right? Combine, express, then we can see the robust increase of the loading behavior. It's not summation, it actually it's an enhancing, right? It's not summation of the green plus orange, it won't be black. Okay, so means that there are some integration occurs in the nervous system then they go more, okay? It's like cat's behaviors, right? So now I can uh, summarize this part. In fact, vibration actually evokes some uh, fast crawling mode. They don't like it, so they are escape mode, okay? But they never roll. Then nociceptive stimulations, activation, artificial activation, evokes the rolling, small percent, most of the animal actually evoke fast crawling. Then we combined, we see the more rolling, right? Then fast crawling, but very few animals actually evoke fast crawling. How actually occurred in the nervous system? That was my question. Then nervous system is, a, I showed the cartoon of the Drosophila nervous system, ventral nerve of, cord of the cross sections. Then it's really, like our nervous system, <laughs> they have a motor domain and sensory domain in the right spinal cord. It's very similar if you know the anatomy of our brain, ventral nerve cord. Then that, and then the mechanosensory and nociceptive terminal is distinct. Okay? Which means that some interneuron integrates, right? To produce the rolling behaviors, right? Then how actually integrate. How many times actually integrate? That's my question, right? Then we can activate the cell randomly. I activate the, using the drivers, activate the neurons. Which one actually evoke rolling? I was looking for the neuron that evokes strongly rolling, right? More than nociceptive neurons. That neuron might be integrate the information of the both. That's I thought. Then I found the two neuron types shown here. One named Goro cells, okay? The other one named Basin cells. Goro cell is a two neurons in the nervous system, only two neurons, okay? This, then Basin cell is a segmentally repeated, okay? Consists from the four cells, from the segment. Each segment contains the four cells, all right? So this is a result okay, of the uh, behaviors. When I activate the goro neurons, we can see the lots of loading, about 80%, right? And basin cell activation also similar. And you can imagine, you remember that when I combine the mechano and nociceptive neurons, we see that about 80%, right? It's very similar amount of the animals that roll. Okay, then, I inhibit the these neurons with the mechanosensory and nociceptive activations. Okay, I evoke the rolling behavior, activate the nociceptive neurons, and provide the vibrations, evoke rolling. Then I can inhibit the basin cells or goro cells. So now we are testing the causalities. All right, we see that reduction of the loading behaviors. Not 100%, okay? But we see the significant reduction of the loading. 
which means that this neuron is important, critical for proper amount of the loading. Agree? All right. Then I can put the, all the neuron in the cartoon one signal. So basin cell actually terminates is the overlap with the two sensory domains. Okay, neurons, mechano and nosh. And the goro neuron is more close to the motor domain. So now I use the EM sections. Do you remember that the, this EM sections? Then we trace the, all the sensory neurons from the, this volume. Because of the stereotyped shape, we can identify the mechanosensory and nociceptive neuron from that image showing here. Then we can deconstruct the, all the partner of the mechanosensory neurons. Showing here is a gray. Okay. All the, this is a partner of the mechanosensory neurons. Then ask which one actually integrates inputs from the nociceptive neurons. These neurons are basically inputs from the both, right? Then actually this is an example of the neurons. Only we found the two neurons among the, these lots of neurons. Showing here, actually it was basins. It's surprisingly, it was basin, and the basin 2-4 is receiving the mechano and noshi inputs from the both, right? But not basin 1 and basin 3. All right, then this is a connectivity map, and we don't know this is true or not, right? Then I activate the each sensory neurons and then monitor the neural activity of the basin four cells. We see that activity in the small activities of the basin four during the vibrations. No, during the nociception, this neuron active very nicely. Then we combine, oh, 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 sorry. We see that more fired than the summation of the green and orange. So this neuron actually right, integrates the information both as well as enhancement happen at the, uh, this neuron levels. It's slightly difficult. So if you don't understand, please ask later, right? So now I showed you that first order interneuron basin integrates both inputs, right? Then we see the enhancement at the first order interneuron. It was a little bit surprising because I thought more parallel pathway happening in, at the first level of the interneurons. Then the question is, right, another convergence can be found in the nervous system. So next question is, right, Goro cell is a next target because we found the goro cell also strongly evoke rolling behaviors. Then, is there occur in the goro cells? This one. To test, first I activate the basin cells and then monitor the goro activities. So whether, the question is whether goro is receiving the input from the basin cells. Answer is yes. When I activate the goro cells, uh, the basin cells, we see the nice response in the goro cells. But we know that they are not directly connected because immuno, immunostaining, goro cell and the basin cell is a discrete. So they have another neurons between goro cell and basin cells. That we already know, but this data suggests that at least goro cells receiving the inputs from the basin cells, okay? Then, we collaborate again to the EM peoples to find the between basin cell and goro cells. Basically, we deconstruct the downstream of the basin cells, okay, manually. It's a lot of work, but we can do that. <laughs> then identify the A05Q actually connect to the goro cells. Basin, multimodal basin information actually going to the goro cells through the A05Q. Another, inter so that this one, also we can uh, the monitor the activities similarly. Then I will skip a little bit detail. Another interesting they found is a um, mono, mono sensory basin information actually integrate 
onto the color cells, okay? Which means that this is a recording, so this is also functional. Oh, oh. Sorry. Next. Okay. Which means that mono right information actually integrate again. I have a question about the word integrate. Ah, uh, integrate. Yeah, because you're, I, if I, this is all new, but you say Goro cells is really, we're talking about two Goro cells here and a whole series of basin cells, uh -huh. right? Um, what do you mean by integrate? I understand what you said so far was that when uh, there is what in this system, when there's one cell that receives, um, pardon me, when the organism receives input in one modality, it has a certain response. In another modality, it has a certain response. And when they're together, it's nonlinear and it increases. Okay. Enhancement. But yeah. that's an integration at the level of a cell. Mm -hmm. Do you have integration that is at the level of a nervous system or an organism rather than just uh, a But cell? the behavior wise, we see the, uh, the enhancement, right? The mechanosensory activation do not evoke any rolling. No safety, yes, and a plus. I, I don't doubt that it has behavioral consequences. Uh -huh. but but normally when we think about integration, uh -huh. we think about nervous system integration and not just cellular integration. Mm, so, uh, but maybe in, in Drosophila, it's a different story. Um, uh, that the, uh, the nervous system integration means that if this neuron uh, integrates a different input, uh, so that... Uh, I'll have it. I'll put it another way: local versus distributed integration. Um, local or probably there are distributed, but um, there are many integration sites. I think. Okay. But we, uh, I believe there are many integration sites. But one of the critical nodes is this one. Okay. Makes sense because if I inhibit the disgoro neurons. We do not see the completely inhibitions of the behaviors, which means that there are several uh, keynotes. So that this is a, one of the keynotes, I think. Okay, so uh, the, 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 my point is, the, so yes, Bayesian cell is a, the, the segmentally repeated, so that actually that if animals stink, they actually fire only one basin cells, or maybe few basin cells, right? Depends on the, I think, the stimulations. Then, some of the one is the, the okay, but each segment, we think that integ the integrate onto the core cells, basically, okay? Then I will talk about the another integrations, Actually, there are ascending neurons collect the, all the basic information. This case is an integration, I think. Is it okay? So that segmentally repeated basic cells information actually integrates the ascending neurons and information going up to the brains. This case, I think nervous system do not know where actually stinged. Location information are missed but they, that these ascending neurons are known that aversive cues are happen, okay? So then actually this brain information can coming back onto the goro cells. So these two cells is a very interestingly that local information as well as ascending back to the, from the back to the brain neuron information are collect then maybe that we don't know yet, but might be that this neuron can decide that the role or not, okay? Then ascending neuron is really important or not, we don't know yet, but when I activate the basin cells and this ascending neuron, we see that more uh, loading behavior, suggesting that it's actually that can modify the brain pathway can modify the behaviors. All right. So I would like to a little bit show you that these cartoons, that this is a real data set of the EM reconstructions, okay? So there is a local pathway and the brain pathway. And the goro cells actually 
collects all the information and to evoke the rolling behaviors. All right. So very briefly, I would like to talk about the behaviors uh, and evolutions because I'm just starting the, this project. And this all actions represent the escape response in the different animals. Okay. And escape response is one of the essential uh, behavior for survival, right? Then Drosophila has a wide range of the species in the world, about 2,000 uh, exist, which means that uh, they have a wide different physiology, morphology, or lots of ecology, etc., and also behaviors. Okay. Then I test the rolling behavior, pinching, 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 or put the high heat, then how much they roll. I test the different species, and well, we found that some species, very little roll, some species, Roll more than melanogasters. And this is a, another cartoon. And we think that there are possibility, there are four possibilities. One is sensory receptor is different. So maybe receptor is more fired, it's more sensitive. And the other possibility is its neuron property is different, more fired, right? They have a slightly different channels expressed so that circuit are same, receptor is the same, but the, the circuit firing rates are different, or sensory receptor is different. Then another possibility is even look same maggot, maybe structure of the circuit is different. Then another final possibility is number of the neurons are different. I think this is a, a, a big animal has a more neurons, etc., and then more behaviors. And that the theories exist so that we want to uh, test that these possibilities to do this basically that because of the these different species do not have the genetic tool like Drosophila melanogasters, so that uh, we need to build the, the tools as well as we are right now generate this EM sections in the this different species to compare that behavior and neuro circuit, and hopefully we can manipulate the neuron types. This is a, the EM section of the this Drosophila uh, santomeas, which shows more loading than the Drosophila melanogasters, and uh, currently our undergrad students tracing this now system, the pictures and hopefully that I can show you a little bit of the example of this uh, neuron tracing from the undergrad student this summer. Basically that this is a sensory neuron, mechanosensory and nociceptive neuron shown in here. Then we can identify the, all the synapse. Then next we are uh, looking for the basin cells Actually, already we found in showing orange that uh, the yellow neuron is all basin cells. So, so far we found almost identical, which means that number of the neurons is uh, all same. Basin cell, we have we found all basin one, two, three, four, and sensory cell, mechanosensory, all eight we found, noceptive, three neurons. This is expected. But we want to know the synapse number may be different, correlated with the behaviors. Okay, that's we are currently working on. Maybe it's almost same, identical. That's maybe possible. So I would like to last pictures that introduce my uh, group. That uh, three top is a graduate student, Alastair Jai and Kazuki was a uh, uh, very temporary. He came that two, uh, three uh, graduate students. And these are for the two people, Melissa and Cecily, did a lot of uh, neuron tracing last summer. And four, and uh, so total six undergrad students working last one year. And then this summer, I got uh, many more undergrad students. So they are tracing more. So finally, I would like to 
uh, acknowledgement to the, all the people shown here, where the most of the work in the multi-sensory integration has been done in the Malta Zrachiti group when I was in postdoc. Uh, then the EM uh, work is Albert Cardona and Casey, Casey Mitchell. Then I also would like to thank you to the, all the funding source for my research. And I'm happy to take your uh, questions. Um, thank you, Tomoko. Great, very interesting. I'm happy to take any questions from the audience. I have a couple myself, but I'll let Stephen lead off. Je uh, let me lead off because I want to make a connection between this talk and what and everything that's happening in this in this summer school. First of all, we're all very relieved that you work on fruit flies and not on cats. But how relieved should we be? Does, and, and I'm asking you to speculate now mm -hmm. because this is not your direct interest, but you speak about nociception and drosophila. Nociception uh -huh. just means the detection of, of damage to, to, uh, to, uh, to, the surf to the peripheral part of the, mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of the body. I'm asking you to conjecture now. Do drosophila, unlike cats, not feel anything when you stimulate their nociceptors? Or do they feel something? And if they do, what's the mechanism for that? So I don't know the feel or not, uh, but actions are different. So the out motor output is different. So I cannot interpret that they feel or not because they never answer to me. <laughs> but so the after training, for example, that electric shock, they don't like it, right? So the, 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 they don't like it because I because I know because after training, for example, some a odors punishment, a order punishment several times. Only order if you present, they avoid the odors, which means that. Probably I can guess that they do not like it, but I do not know they get the pain or not, okay. right? Yep. They, they, they do not like it means that I'm not, I do not know that uh, they feel pain or not. That's, I'm not sure. You will be in some sessions later in the summer school <laughs> where people will be asking the same question about plants uh -huh. and eventually even about prokaryotic single cells. Mm -hmm. But the question underlying it, and then I'll, I'll let the other people ask questions, is all of, with six, with six behaviors and 10,000 neurons uh -huh. and the analysis that you're doing, the, if, there were a, if there were a scientist in Mars trying mm -hmm. to say what's going on over here, they would say there's a, there's a dynamical system on Earth that they call Drosophila mm -hmm. that can do six things uh -huh. with, with 10,000 neurons, and it's a robot. It just does these things based on simulation. If you associate so-called mm -hmm. nociceptive mm -hmm. stimulation with an odor, then eventually they'll avoid mm -hmm. the odor, but they're really just little robots. And the question at base, and the reason we brought in the lower organisms is because it really is a question are they feeling or aren't they? We're, it's not that we're sitting here hoping that you're not hurting these Drosophila. I am. Mm -hmm. But besides that, we're looking for a, a line mm -hmm. in nervous system function where we can be uh, confident that the organism is not feeling. Not feeling. I don't know. <laughs> I, I do not know. <laughs> Question up there, yeah. Thank you, nice presentation. Um, could you explain me a bit more uh, how the goro neuron integrate the the signal to create to create a, to cause a, an increased response? Is it is it that they modulate the threshold activation of firing rate of other neuron, or they literally integrate in? So uh, the question of uh, Stephen was interesting about that. Uh, Okay, so the, the goron neuron itself is a probably, we are thinking that the, um, more command-like neurons 
which means that during the firing, they coordinate the downstream of the CPG, okay? Then they could evoke the loading behavior. They need to very, right, the, the coordinate the muscles to do a disloading behavior, which means that they have a CPG layers between the goro and motor output, motor muscles, neurons, I can say, so that they, they are, uh, and only two neurons cannot right, produce a very coordinate <laughs> uh, motor output, which means that they, they are controlling that downstream of the CPG. Is that answered or? Yeah, but it seems to me that if even if there is only two goal neuron, I think mm -hmm. that this one could just modulate the function gain of activation threshold for the other neuron, and that could play uh, a big an important role in coordinating. I don't coordinating. think gain controllers. It's more command neurons because if you activate, it's really they could uh, do a uh, if only two neuron activation, right? We can evoke the, uh, the rolling behaviors. It's not gain uh, okay. gain neurons. Okay. Uh, if you can add it, yeah. Do you think your your maggot have something like uh, top down control of their behavior, or they're, they're, it's just reflex to just follow the the, the question? Ah, uh, the, the the reflex or a, a robot or thinking or something. I mean, it's, I, I really don't, cannot say, but they can do many things, means that they can learn, right? So the, the experience change the behaviors and depends on the stage of the Arabis, they are different, which means that some lots of neuromodulator modify the behaviors and experience also change. Where they grow, they change the different actions. So... I don't think that reflex, it's more than that. I mean, 10,000 neurons is not only for reflex, right? Even I think the Sierengan 300 neurons, I little bit doubt that it's, it's reflex. They can do more than that. So, but I'm not sure that his answer is feeling or not. I do not know, no, but. That was, that was Okay, cognition. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know the cogni cognition. Is, so I'm not a psychologist. So the definition of the cognition itself, I don't know yet. <laughs> but the, they, they, they do more than that. Not more, I don't think reflex. You evoke that, the, the possibility of learning, but mm -hmm. uh, you... Desensitization you, also... Uh, but changing the, preference is not... Or, Changing preference is not necessarily learning because it could be uh, changing preference in uh, d developmental change in preference. Oh, no, no, but we can train them. Okay, fine. Yes. Thank you. That's a good my question. Uh -huh. We have another question up here. Hi, thank you very much for the, the talk. It was really interesting. Um, you, uh, I was wondering, because you do a lot of work uh, with nociception and that type of stuff, and uh, it seems to me like it would um, uh, create uh, fight flight responses, fight flight freeze. I was wondering for the decision making if you tried with reinforcement or different types of food or like positive, like more uh, positive. Like if you if you put like a piece of strawberry and a piece of banana uh -huh. and which one they will choose. Like the, do they have that power or they would like simply go to the closest one or they? Did you do some work on that? Or? So I'm not doing, but in this field, people are working on to the olfactory is a preference of the. Uh, how to navigate, right? How to trajectory going to the, towards to the, how to strategy of the, towards to the good source or, right, banana or strawberry, right? That people are working on. But I'm not personally doing, but the people are working on. Exactly. Because of the simple olfactory system that the only 23 sensory neurons, so that how actually, right, the, the, this sensory neuron integrates all the information to produce to towards to the uh, source code. So like it's a, so like they can basically decide like the so where right right. Going. So the basically turn when you turn, they have a two choice right. So we are so that there are many choice because they we are actually they going some point they need to stop and then turn right. If you go into the 
mistake direction. They need to stop and then, right? So that they need to, right? Sensing to the decreasing the input, then stop, right? Where they stop, I think they are deciding. Then they have a two direction, right? Choice where they go, right? And that the, they decide to towards to the the usually okay that it's not hundred percent, but they are towards to the source code. So the turning is more direction where they want to go, right? There is a choice, right? They do. So, so they take that choice. To, so, so they can make that choice too when, like, the the uh, they get attacked by uh, uh, another fly, like the like another the, fly. You mean? Yeah, when uh, with the nociception, like they they can use that choice, like to go right, left. Ah, you mean that the, the nociceptive neuron can be uh, aversive to 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 probably it's possible, I think. But the pain case, I think it's a little bit too much. Then they are. <laughs> It's really they go more towards to the loading, so I'm not sure it's a good source. But uh, the, for example, um, aversive olfactory cues, they choose to the right aversive cue, right? The other aversive cue. So to, the turning is an avoiding choice, I think. Thank you. Okay. It's fine. No problem. Just, just to set your mind at, at ease, Tomoko, you are doing cognitive science. All that we mean by cognition, okay. apart from feeling, which is uh -huh. also part, all we mean by cognition is the mechanisms that generate our capacity to, to do what we can do. And okay. that's what you're, exactly what you're doing with okay. the Drosophila. So there's no question that those mechanisms are cognitive mechanisms. The question there was about whether the cognitive mechanism is a top-down one uh -huh. where there's some higher level mm -hmm. of integration, mm -hmm. maybe even a, a distributed level uh -huh. that's finally making this choice, uh -huh. or is it just a cell flip-flop? Um, we don't know completely yet, I think. We are trying to understand what's going on here. <laughs> but uh, my feeling is distributed. I have a question, uh, and then we'll take one up there. Uh, relate, very much related to the gentleman's previous question. I'm just, and it's not your specialty area, but I'm going to ask you just in case you happen to know. Um, do you know if anyone has studied um, what we might call, probably the, maybe taking it too far with flies for many people here, personality, which is to say um, individual variation in, yes. in decision people making and preference, yes. uh -huh. uh, but that's consistent within the individual but varies uh -huh. between uh -huh. individuals. Do you know uh -huh. if there's any evidence for that in fruit flies? Um, uh, yes. There is? Yes. Okay. There is a personalities, yes. Uh, I mean, people say personality, right? So the, for example, right, e even this rolling, if I did a 10 times stimulation, some animals consistently roll, some they don't. I mean, people say this is a personality too, right? Even genetically, all same progeny, they should be the, I mean, maybe slightly different experience, but that some of them are roll more, maybe they sense more, they feel pain more, mm -hmm. like you said, but that some of them, they really don't care all the time. But we don't know the reason, but they have a variability all the time, and Thank then you. consistent, right? Thank you. Yes, question up here. Yes. Um, can a node have multiple connection and connected to different system? Can it have many functions? That many functions. I think so. Uh, the, the, you, what do you mean that the, the many functions? Well, uh, Base be, cells, be used right? in, in different modalities, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, um, so base in cell case, it's actually this neuron integrates many somatosensory input. And we think that combination of the firing uh, also very important to produce a specific actions. So that it's, it's I don't know the, the, the answer of the, the, the question about the exactly. Well, but. I'll clarify and, and come back later. Um, is there a predictable pattern of movements? Predictable motor pattern. Or it's pattern. more random? Uh, I don't think random. It's a. It's really they. They are 
the motor output is uh, like us, I think, <laughs> that even you basically the environment and then they receive or then they do something. So it's not random, right? Hunch, I can expect, right? When I put the vibration, typical movement is the first hunch, then turn, then go, right? That's a typical, but not 100%. So I can expect that most of the time they hunch and turn and then go. Okay, but, but there's a predictable pattern. Yes, there are predictable patterns. What happens if you, uh, I don't know how you stress those animals, but what happens under stress? Is the pattern very more or less? Uh, stressful pattern. So the after, de like desensitization, maybe. So the, if I put them all the time vibration, what they do? That's that's my question. Or, do they they move more? Um, do they become more predictable or less predictable with stress? Oh, uh, less predictable. No, that's I'm not sure. But probably statistically, we could expect in the end. I mean, we we can test, right? For example, stress conditions one day or two days. Then we can test with a, a before and after how they change. We can test. But I don't think uh, uh, maybe it's different before and after. Probably, I, I think it's different. Thank you. Right. Another question up here. Yes. Uh, I would just like to make a comment on personality. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand how personality works, I guess it would be more something of related to preferences uh, for instance, uh, I think uh, Premac did some research on pigs uh, and personality and uh, what the pigs do during the, the, their free time can vary. But when we talk about uh, flies, when you induce a stimulus in the brain, can we actually call that a personality if one in the, uh, well, in the maggot so, actually. So the, for example, okay, maggot can like the banana or strawberry, right? For example. Yeah, for example, if, if they roll more, if one individual roll more uh, after one stimulus, for example, can we call that personality per se or just a different reaction to a stimul stimulus? I, I don't know. I, I actually, I, I do not know. But the, the, if you uh, okay, like to say that preference, banana or strawberry, which one you like, right? I think that the, some animal likes more than banana, some animal likes more strawberry, I think. We can find. Anyone tested them with uh, persimmons, perhaps, or uh, strawberry raspberries? Strawberry and banana, I don't know yet. Uh, they need more fruit choices. <laughs> but, so I but do. People, but people are studying the personality, that's I know. Right? But I do not remember what the paradigm of the personality for them. Right? Okay. Uh, we have a question up here. Uh, hello. Can you come back on the on the correlation between the number of neurons and the, the decision making. I'm not sure I, I understand this. And mm -hmm. what is it possible to, to draw a line between what is only reflexes and what is really decision making? And can you imagine even smaller organisms mm -hmm. that are able of such kind of a decision? decision? So, right, I, I am so I really don't know the good words as a decision or reflex. Um, but the, you can see, right, that this just rolling from the predator, try to escape from the predator looks like a reflection, right? Maybe you, people say if you don't know anything about the, the nervous system, maybe just say reflections. But if you look at the nervous system, 10,000 neurons. And then integration, is, you can see the map, how very complicated. And then right from the brain pathways, local pathways, it's so much things going on. I I'm don't know what's the difference between humans and the flies. Or, I mean, if you don't want to say humans, maybe mouse and the fry. Number system seems like for me, it's just number of the synapses is different. A, a number is much, much smaller than mice. But probably the other system, I think they do a similar job. 
So that's why we use the decisions. But I do not, so that as a system, brain, if you think about the look into the, these systems, I'm going to the, right, the brain, number of the neurons, so much connectivity, it's so much jangles, it's really similar to the mouse brain, I can say, or human brain, I think, really. So that's why uh, I do not see that they are just reflex as a human was. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. But there is a big argument, I think, yes. I don't know, right? <laughs> Another question up here. Good morning, my name is Mireille Goulet. It's a bit out of, of, out of this, this uh, field of research, but as uh, we were discussing earlier about personality, uh, since natural selection favors ver variability mm -hmm. in, in organisms, uh, it, it seems to me that any organism that is affected by natural selection will have personalities. Mm -hmm. um, no matter the, the size or the complexity of the nervous system. Flowers. I don't know. Yes, Stephen? Flowers? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just wondering. So I don't know if you have any uh, comment on that. I, it's totally uh, out. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, probably variety of the individual difference is a evolutionary selection, part of the maybe evolutionary selections. And human personality, I don't know yet. I, I'm not sure, but um, it's for me, it's all same, right? Even so that, that um, we are trying to write genetic variation is smaller, smaller, right? So that's why we, we are using the, uh, this specific uh, the model organism and then just cross and then test. It's all the time same genetic background, but still we see the all the time bell curve. The behavior is all the time, there is a distribution. Mm -hmm. So which means that even same genetic background, there are variabilities. Uh, I don't know, oh, I, I'm not sure this is a personality or evolutional, uh, why, or I don't, yes. <laughs> Okay, or behavior is always distributed. I'm not That's sure. True. Okay, Another question up here. Yeah, it's a comment uh, about that, actually. I agree with Tomoko that, well, well I think that uh, what Mireille said is, uh, maybe it's not... Uh, that's what you wanted to, to, to say, but it's an oversimplification of personality because I think that, of, of course, there's variety uh, within a species and that is how evolution can occur, is, is that certain uh, variants survive uh, better once there's an environmental uh, environmental change but I think that you know making a choice in a certain uh, situation it can be personality but I think personality is something that is much more complex and that there should be another term for uh, these kinds of situations with organisms that can apply to plants for example if I don't know. <laughs> if I can just comment there, I mean, the word personality, it contains the word person, so it, it, it uh, invokes um, a conscious awareness, um, uh, which is not to argue for or against personality in fruit flies. I, this is back to that original question, are they, are they conscious? Uh, is there any experience there? It's, it's a fascinating question and a, I guess it's kind of the hard problem, right, Stephen? The other mind's problem, okay, well, it's still hard, so. Um, but I guess it raises a semantic question I wanted to ask you. Um, is there in your mind any difference between the meanings of decision-making, and I, I see that you sometimes use the word decision, I see you, you have that on your website, but you also use the term action selection. Uh, do those terms, are they synonymous for you, or they, they have so, different meanings? So people, okay, if I put the decisions, um, many mammalian people do not like I say decisions. So I remove the decisions and selection is they more accept and choice accept. Uh, that's for mammalian people's uh, the usually. I, I, I don't know the, what's the right words for me, but, but it's usually complaining from the others. That's an honest reason. I'm sorry. Thank you for clarifying that, interesting. And we have another question. Yes, um, 
you say that the past experience they, they can learn. Uh, what happens with the learning? Is it the um, number of synapses? Is it uh, uh, change what? the synapse yes. number? What? So that's an interesting question. We this EM study is very very difficult. We cannot do the many animals, so we don't know yet. But next five years, probably we should we will know. I hope it's some difference of the changing the synapse numbers, but we don't know yet. More work for undergrads. <laughs> probably. Or right now, actually, this neuron tracing is tedious, so that the machine start tracing. The segmentation doing the, all the, the computer wise, but still computer mistake more than humans, of course. Then it's challenging to combining to the computer and the human tracing together right now. But it probably next five years, the speed much faster. Another question. Mm -hmm. uh, you said uh, one type of um, like pressure could elicit one uh, response and pain or nociception, another one. And then when you combine them, you have a, yet another mm -hmm. response. How close do they need to be? Do they need to be exactly the same time to have a uh, combined okay. response? Yes, that's a good question too. So the, uh, if I vibration fast, then immediately if I put the nociceptive, same effect I see, but one second, if you far away, I do not see the, any effect. And if you, see, you do switch, it backwards? Uh, switch is, I have, mm, I think almost same time probably works. The, 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 the next each other works, but if you have a gap, it's not work. Okay, thank you. We need a very close, uh, almost overlap. Yep, question. Thank you for being here. Um, so obviously the, the main title of this, uh, the main subject of this whole uh, week and a half yes. of uh, discussions uh -huh. has to do with whether or not animals can feel and uh -huh. well, as Stephen was saying. And um, I know that we're, we're whenever possible, we're heading into a direction where we could actually have simulations of things that we can, so we don't have to actually uh, test the real thing. For example, we're doing this with uh, proteins, we're folding proteins, we have these computers doing all the possibilities and computing that in order to try and find cures for diseases. Um, so you, what you're doing is you're working with actual living things. Um, the simplest ones as possible, and the idea is that you'll uh, it'll be easier to manipulate, etc. We call that a model, mm -hmm. although it's actually an animal. Mm -hmm. um, how far do you think we are from a time where we could actually do what we're doing with the proteins? We could do that with a mathematical model of those uh, the flies, so we don't have to have, actually kill okay. flies, uh, mm -hmm. billions of them. Can we make the marble to computers or something like that? <laughs> something like that. Uh -huh. So we could do most of the testing on using calculations, basically. Uh -huh. So I think it's um, it's probably very challenging as a computationally to understand that these 10,000 neurons, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a neuro, uh, uh, how to say, the theory uh, background, but uh, still, okay, she elegant, 300 neurons. Mm -hmm. It's probably right now still they cannot understand at the computational levels, right? That even 300 cannot understand, and then 10,000 neurons, it's probably still far away. <laughs> then what we can learn from that this drosophila probably we try to need to um, what is the complicated nervous system right it's pretty much complicated yeah, I think for sure. then um, hopefully we can try to find the principle of the neural circuit to understand to bigger animal that's that's uh, we can try to but uh, it's interesting way to yeah try i'm not sure to, we have yeah. the computing mm -hmm. power for mm -hmm. yes. for that uh -huh. but mm -hmm. do you think it 
Do you think it's a possibility in the Possibilities. future? Maybe 50 <laughs> Maybe. years from now, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Based on your intuition. Um, I don't know. Um, mm. Hopefully, yes, but uh, uh, right now still challenging, I think. That neuro theoretically to understand that this 10,000 neuron is still challenging, right? But hopefully that it's, if we cannot do these animals, I think we cannot do the mouse or humans, right? Mm. So I think the field is trying to go forward to this way, I think. So some people are hoping mm -hmm, for that mm -hmm, too, mm -hmm. I guess. This may be a naive comment from me. I'm not a neuroscientist, but um, just a numbers question or comment. Even with just, quote unquote, just 10,000 neurons, um, I, I wonder how much processing complexity there might be, capacity, processing capacity there might be. A, a, a statistic I heard yesterday in this very room is that on a Go, a Go board, which is a very, very limited number of pieces of just two colors, right, black and white, mm -hmm. There's 10 to the 128 possible positions, <laughs> which is more, I, I was told more than there are atoms in the universe. Uh -huh. um, so I guess just going for extrapolating from that or interpolating yeah. maybe super, uh, super tough, yeah. a, a relatively small number of neurons doesn't necessarily mean um, pro a huge limitation in processing capacity or maybe it does, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, right, right. And I, I, I'm not sure that this is efficiently to build, right? The, I don't think the nervous system built for the efficiency. Just happened. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's pretty difficult to <laughs> challenging. I think it's the capacity and the, right. We have another question up here. Uh, I'm not sure this is a question. It might be more of a comment. But between this talk and a previous one on um, Aminotodes. Uh, I've been kind of struck at how um, how much work it seems that single neurons are doing. Uh, if we look at like artificial neural networks, um, in order to get them to do anything, we need a lot of neurons. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just kind of struck by that difference between the biological neural nets and artificial neural nets. It seems mm -hmm. like the neurons mm -hmm. are on on their own are much more sophisticated than the kind of more uniform homogeneous things we have in artificial neural nets um, and that we can we need so few of them to get something like a worm to move its head or or a, a maggot to to roll um i don't know if you have any things <laughs> yeah, to say on it's, that but it's it's uh, interesting comment um mm. Right, other systems, uh, because uh, um, I think there are, uh, my feeling is, if I look into the, all the neurons activation or inhibition or whatever, seems like there are some hubs, very, very important neurons in the systems. And there are many, many other, we don't know what they're doing, but seems like important, right? It looks like important, but the many neurons actually, but we are, we cannot test all the behaviors. So that neurons is a very critical for the other stuff. But if you look at the, the uh, connectivity map, it's pretty much obvious. So there are several neurons are very, in, looks like important because so much, inputs from the many and the output also. So there are the others, the map, if you look at the map of the circuit, I can really see that, okay, who is a little bit important than the others. But as a system, why these guys are important, I don't know yet. The, the, we don't know the other system, how it actually works. Is we, we still don't know yet. Even we don't know the, how to crawl. It's Thanks very so simple, but it's very difficult. Also. Yeah. So. Okay, we're about out of time. So, um, unless there's any final question, I just want to thank Tomoko for her very interesting quest, uh, presentation and a, a quite stimulating Q and A. Thanks, everybody. We'll take a break. <laughs>